Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Mike Bodell at Bulb Digital. This is part two in a series on speeding up your Power Apps development. What we're gonna talk about today is applying global styles to your components. So in order to apply your branding or your theme to your component, we need to use something called component parameters. Um, and to do that, uh, we can simply select our component. So in this case, we have our application header that we worked on the last time. Um, and what you'll see here on the right is you have the ability to create custom properties. And so the real important thing here to note is that you want to understand before you go create these, what are the elements of your uh, header, for example, that you'd like to apply the brand to. So in our case, we might want to apply it to the primary text, the secondary text, and maybe our exit button as an example. Uh, so in order to do this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new custom property. Uh, and this will bring up a, a panel here where you can actually uh, define the display name, the name, a description, the type of property that it is, and then ultimately a, a data type. So we're gonna go ahead and do that here. Uh, we're gonna create one for primary text. We're gonna define a description. We're gonna define this as an input parameter. Uh, so this, that means that uh, content is coming into the component in this case, and then we're gonna define a data type. So note here that there are a number of things uh, that you're given to select from. In this case, we're applying a color. Uh, so we're gonna choose color as our data type. So we're gonna go ahead and create that. Um, and so then we have our first parameter. We're gonna create another one for our secondary text. provide a brief description. Again, this will be input type, uh, and we're gonna choose color. So we'll create that one, and now we'll create one more for our icon color. Find a description. Again, an input parameter, and we'll choose color as the data type. So now that we've created our parameters, we actually need to wire those up so that they actually uh, take effect on the controls within our header component. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna select uh, our primary text, so our title uh, in our component. Um, and we're gonna jump over here and we're going to find our color property. Uh, and we're simply going to apply the parameter from our header component called primary text. And then we'll do the same thing for our secondary text. So we'll find our color property. And notice that I'm referencing the application header component itself um, as the parameter is actually a property or a variable on that component. So we'll choose our secondary text. And now we'll go over to our icon Again, find our relevant color property and we'll specify our icon color. Okay, so now we have that wired up. So I just wanted to stop for a quick moment and say that if you like this kind of content or are interested in this, be sure to subscribe to the channel uh, and stay tuned for additional posts that we're gonna be making. So once we've actually wired up our component to our parameters, our controls to our parameter properties, the next thing we want to do is actually put that in action in our application screens. So fast forward a few steps, I've actually already applied a bit of branding to my application screens, uh, and I'm doing that through the app on start method in this case. If you're not familiar with that, post a comment and we'll be happy to create another video uh, to help you learn how to do that. Um, but in this case, in my application, I have a bunch of variables set in the onStart method that define the colors that I want in my application. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna, on this first screen, our list screen, we're gonna wire up this header uh, to actually uh, specify the colors that we want for those particular parameters. Uh, so in this particular case, you'll see I have selected my header component and I have these custom properties set here um, as far as the primary text, secondary text, and icon color parameters. Uh, and this is where we actually want to set those to something from our 
brand theme. Uh, so in this case, we're gonna go find those particular elements uh, and we're gonna define those. So for my primary text, I'm simply gonna use from my colors variables, my primary one. Uh, for my secondary text, I'm gonna use primary two. And for my icon color, I'm gonna use the black that I have defined. All right, so the only other thing to note here is that the actual, there is a property, a color property, that you can specify directly on the component itself uh, that is there out of the box, and that is the fill property. Uh, so we can actually come in here, and if we wanted uh, the background of our particular um, component to be uh, you know, a light gray or something like that, we could use from our same brand color palette, Actually, in this case, we'll make it gray. And so just like that, we've actually applied those colors to our header. So now you see that it's pretty easy to actually apply your brand colors or your theme uh, to a header component that you've created or any component for that matter. But you might say, wait a minute, I have other screens that are using those same components and those, that theme did not get applied to those. Uh, so this is where there's a little pro tip that I'll tell you about that can come in handy. So to resolve that issue, you'll notice, for example, in my other screen that my header has not taken on those same colors. Uh, but to resolve that, we can simply jump over to our component. Um, and you'll also note that the component itself has not taken on any, any of those colors. It itself is completely application unaware. So it does not know uh, about those things that we attempted to pass into it. So one of the things you can actually do here is we can go into our actual parameters that we've defined and they have their default values here. We have the ability to start them off with a default value. So in this case, we can actually do something like this. Colors.primary1. Colors.primary2, for example, for our secondary text, just like we did uh, on the screen itself for the component. And then for our icon, we can use our black. Uh, and then we can even come in here and specify our fill. And so these are default values that we've specified. Uh, as I said, the component is completely unaware. So if you can just get over the fact that you get these little red squigglies and it doesn't know what they are. Um, when this actually does show up in the application, it picks up on these defaults and it just simply works. So let's jump over to our screens again and take a look. And there's that second screen with all of those colors applied. So in addition to color properties or theme properties, you can set other values using the same technique. So your application name or any secondary text that you might need to set, uh, as, a, as an example, can be done through the same mechanism, through parameters on the component. Uh, literally, the possibilities are unlimited, uh, really only limited by the complexity of your component. So what makes this gem super valuable is that as a component, not only can you use this across your application, but you can actually share this across your organization with other app developers in order to keep the same theme, brand, look and feel across all of the applications in your organization. And that's ultimately where it's really powerful, which leads me to the topic of our next post, which is actually, how do we publish that for our organization through the use of a component library? So that was just a few minutes on how to put together uh, branding for your component and how you can tie those things together in your application. If you have any questions about this, feel free to post a comment and we will get back to you. Once again, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.